So this is the new crystal ring and um, we begin with Keta because this crystal ring is dedicated to the Kabbalah tree of life and the Sephirot or the spheres of the tree of life are arranged as a ten-pointed star, a ten-pointed circle and the client sits in the middle and absorbs the combined energies of the crystals. So we're beginning at Keta and this is lapis lazuli and um, actually at Keta this the sigil of Mu dedicated to Keta is the Queen of Mu so this is definitely a, a matriarchal system here so the Queen of Mu lapis lazuli Keta and then going to Homa and this is tiger's eye and um, Oh yes, it's a good good idea just to um, to sprinkle water on each of the crystals as we go. So that's the lapis lazuli. This is tiger's eye for Huma, and this is dedicated to the king of Mew, to the king of Mew. This is yellow moonstone, and this is dedicated to Hesed, which is. Um, the Prince of Air, Sigil of Mew. This is Quartz, Rosy Quartz, and um, this is dedicated to Tipperet and to the um, Princess of Water, Sigil of Mew. And um, this is a piece of amber, and this is dedicated to Yesod and I dedicated this to the sea turtle sigil of Mew. This is at the bottom here Amethyst which is dedicated to Malkut and um, this is dedicated to the uh, royal, royal court physician sigil of Mew. And this is hematite, and this is dedicated to um, Hod, um, which is um, ascribed to the sea serpent or magnifier one sigil of Mu. This is malachite, and this is dedicated to. The Netzach, Netzach, um, and Netzach is is to the Epsilon sigil of Mu. So this is Epsilon sigil of Mu. This is Snowflake Obsidian, and this is dedicated to Gebura, and Gebura is dedicated to the uh, Princess of Earth sigil of Mu, and this little. Um, little stone here is black onyx and black onyx is uh, attributed to Binar Sephirot uh, which is assigned to the um, royal midwife of Mew I see we're just beginning to wake up now in the morning a Sunday morning um, and these are the seven crystals of the Zahen Ze system of Mu healing. So I dedicate these to the goddess Mu as well. 
So um, if you wish to know more about uh, the Mew Crystal Ring, join the Temple Mew and there's a bit of a uh, discussion paper on, on these. The, um, att the attributes of these are very, very obscure and I channeled the information. Um, I don't know why the stones attributed to the various Sephiroth really. I mean the Rosy Quartz Tipperet, that's kind of traditional alright. Um, and so is the Amethyst to Malkut I suppose and maybe the Lapis Lazuli to Keta, but apart from that they're all rather obscure and also I don't really know why the sigils of Mew have been variously assigned to the Sephiroth as well, somewhat obscure reasons. Um, but it doesn't really matter because when the, when the um, client um, sits in the middle of this crystal ring, uh, the Mew healing goes where it will and it knows best and it knows why these crystals are arranged in the pattern that you see here. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now. I actually forgot to uh, dedicate this little onyx, piece of onyx here. Or rather. And that's the thing with crystals, after you've actually uh, used them for a session of healing, you uh, should always take the crystal and um, wash it under the tap, under, under running water or in a stream uh, so that the water gushes over the crystal and um, clears the crystal away. So you, could, you should always do that in between clients. Do it with, a, with all ten crystals and you should also um, run, when, when you've used these for a, for a healing session, you should also run these under, under a tap or in a stream of running water. Uh, it's always a good idea to do that with crystals. Um, because they are uh, intelligent manifestations of energy and they will absorb everything and everyone uh, but if you run them under cold water, under underwater, running water uh, you will ensure that um, they don't remember the last client and they don't remember the, your interactions with the last client, more important still. Okay.